Hey there, welcome on back. We're going to talk about bindings. How does a program keep an internal state? How does it remember things? We have seen how to produce new values from old values, but this has not changed the old values, and the new value has to be immediately used or will dissipate again. To catch and hold values, JavaScript provides a thing called a binding or variable. So, another vocab term. This one's going to be a little bit trickier to define because we don't really have a good sense of what they mean by this yet because it says to catch and hold values. So that's what we're going to start with. To catch and hold values. And perhaps we'll add to that in a moment. So we have let caught equals 5 times 5 semicolon. That's a second kind of statement. The special word, keyword, let, indicates that this sentence is going to define a binding. It is followed by the name of the binding name of the binding, and if we want to immediately give it a value by an equal operator and an expression. We're going to call this from now on an assignment operator. And we want to not confuse this or conflate this with the triple equals or double equals that we saw in the last chapter, which allows us to compare if two values are the same or if they're not, and it gives us a boolean. This is not the same as that at all. This is the assignment. It basically means let caught be assigned to the value or be bound to the value of whatever 5 times 5, whatever this expression evaluates to, that's what caught is going to be bound to. Um, and we'll just say for now. Uh, the previous statement creates a binding called caught and uses it to grab hold of the number that is produced by multiplying 5 by 5. Excellent. After a binding has been defined, its name can be used in this expression. So I think we have a little bit more that we could probably put into, into our uh, definition. So uh, let's say the special keyword lets us bind. And there's a lot of this that could be useful in there. Special word keyword, uh, previous statement creates a binding. Expression. This is a pretty good statement. We we'll probably want to include this. After a binding has been defined, its name can be used in this expression. Okay, there might be something else we want in here. Mm, that's probably good enough for now. Okay, so anyway, after a binding has been defined, its name can be used as expression. The value of such an expression is the value the binding currently holds. Here's an example. So let 10 equal 10. Colin said a log 10 times 10. And they're suggesting by this comment and arrow that the console output is going to be 100. So I actually haven't done this yet. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, run the code. Ah, and they give you a little console output down below. So that's cool. Uh, when a binding points at a value, that does not mean it is tied to that value forever. The assignment operator can be used at any time on existing bindings to disconnect them from their current value and have them point to a new one. So here we have let mood is equal to light. Constant log the mood and we're gonna get light. Then we're gonna say mood uh, is equal to dark now. When we count it on log mood again, we'll see that it's dark. So let's go ahead and run this code. Excellent. So we get light from the first console output and dark from the second. You should imagine bindings as tentacles rather than boxes. That's a very, very apt metaphor. They do not contain values, they grasp them. Two bindings can refer to the same value. A program can access only the values that it still has a reference to. When you need to remember something, you grow a tentacle to hold on to it, or you reattach one of your existing tentacles to it. Cool. Let's look at another example. To remember the number of dollars that Luigi still owes you, you create a binding. And I can tell why they're calling it a binding rather than a variable, just because it used to be var. And I think they're going to mention var in a moment, but uh, they changed the var keyword, V-A-R, to let, L-E-T. Um, and I think they mentioned in a second why they're not going to go over what the difference is until later, so I'm also not going to go over the difference until later, mainly because the difference is, well, it's just not that important right now. It will be, of course, but we want to make sure that we layer in very nicely, uh, you know, too much information uh, at a time, or we don't layer in too much information at a time. Okay, create a binding, and then when he pays you back 35, you give this binding a new value. So let Luigi's debt equal 140. So you let Luigi $140. Luigi's debt is now equal to Luigi's debt minus 35 because he gave you 35 back. Console.log Luigi's debt and the value has been changed or the binding has been changed for Luigi's debt to be a value of 105. We'll go ahead and run this code and I'm going to try to do the command enter that they did. Cool. 
When you define a binding without giving it a value, the tentacle has nothing to grasp, so it ends in thin air. If you ask for the value of an empty binding, you'll get the value undefined. Now they don't actually do this, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to our code, and we're going to show you what this is. So we'll say, now we'll use let. Let uh, this variable we do not define. And so that's what they mean by creating a binding and not assigning it to anything. So if we were to have a look at what the console output of this is, now Replit actually changed what they do for this recently. So if this doesn't work, I'm going to apologize, but this should output undefined over here. So if we run this, undefined, excellent. That's better than I thought it was going to come out. But anyway, that's what they mean. Since this tentacle isn't pointing to anything, we define what the tentacle to be pointing at um, to be undefined. A single let statement may define multiple bindings. The definitions must be separated by commas. I would not recommend doing this yet, but you absolutely can. And the idea here is that rather than having to recreate the let for two equals two, we can just put a comma here and it assumes that you mean let all of these values equal whatever we're binding them to. So let's go ahead and run this, just make sure it's three. So as you can see, one is bound to one, two is bound to two, console.log1 plus 2, this evaluates to 3, so we log 3 to the console. The words var, oh, here it is, and const can also be used to create bindings in a way similar to let. var name is equal to ada, constant greeting is equal to hello, hello, or console.log uh, greeting plus name, hello ada. No harm in running it. Excellent. Let's go ahead and change this to person listening to this and run it again. And you can see how there's a space here, so that's why it's formatted properly. If we were to remove this space, of course, it's gonna you know, line up like that. Um, it's fun. I would definitely recommend messing with these things each time that, you, that we, uh, we do this. Excuse me. The first var, short for variable, is the way bindings were declared in pre-2015 JavaScript. Uh, hand up guilty right here as being somebody who learned JavaScript right before 2015. So when you hear me squawk about how I don't like let or const or at least introducing them, it's because I have insecurities about not knowing them well enough, seeing as how I didn't learn them the first time. But anyway, I'll get back to the precise way it differs from let in the next chapter, so will we. For now, remember that it most closely, sorry, remember that it mostly does the same thing, but we'll rarely use it in this book because it has some confusing properties. I think they're talking about var, and what they mean by confusing properties is that, well again, next chapter for that. Um, it just doesn't work exactly the way that let does, but they're pretty darn similar. Uh, const is an excellent addition because const basically means it's constant. Uh, so the word const stands for constant, it defines a constant binding, which points at the same value for as long as it lives, this is useful for bindings that give a name to a value so that you can easily refer to it later. I don't like this sentence because that's what bindings do in general. So let's mess with const for just a moment. What we're going to do is we're going to define a constant variable. We're going to say const uh, name is equal to um, Christoph. Sure. Uh, and then we're going to console.log name. And this will just be our test run. And we'll see Christoph. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy our console.log name and we're going to try to reassign name to be something else. Now, if const works the way that I think it does, and again, const happened after I learned JavaScript the first time, so I feel very shaky about it. Um, but the idea is pretty simple. What's going to happen here, I think, is that name is not going to be able to be reassigned here because we've defined it as a constant variable. So if we run it, see, assignment to a constant variable. It basically means like, hey, you tried to uh, reassign a variable that you told me you weren't going to be able to reassign. So here's all the errors, here's where it happened. If we change this to let, of course, we'll be able to see it in both ways. So there's a quick little mini demonstration. Uh, const stands for constant. We could put constant and let into our uh, definitions, but I don't really think they're useful as definitions. They're going to be the kind of thing you use so often that you don't really need to see them defined in an isolated fashion. So with that, that's it for bindings. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.